In this session, we'll look at how to import a high-resolution aerial photo into InfraWorks. As you can see, we're starting out where we left off in the last session. In that session, I used Recap Photo to process some drone imagery and create assets that were aligned to ground control points. One of those assets is this 3D mesh that we see on screen. Now, in addition to this mesh, Recap Photo also extracted a high-resolution aerial image and a point cloud from my drone data. I would like to incorporate that high-resolution image into an InfraWorks model. As a side note, if you would like to review the session where I walk through the creation of these objects, I will leave a link to that recording in the description for this one. Here in InfraWorks, I have created a model of this same site using Model Builder. If I orbit around, we can see some of this. Let's zoom in and take a quick look at the aerial imagery that came along from Model Builder. Now, this is nice. It tells a story. However, the resolution is quite low. Having said that, there are some ways to sharpen this image up a little bit, but certainly not to the level that you would get using imagery captured from a drone. Fortunately, I have such an image. I'm going to bring up Windows Explorer, and then I'll jump into the folder where I downloaded data from Recap Photo. Right here, we'll find the zip file containing my ortho TIFF. As a courtesy, I have already extracted this zip file. Let's jump into the extracted folder, and then I will simply drag and drop the high resolution image into the interface. When the data source configuration dialog box pops up, I'll choose Close and Refresh. InfraWorks will then process the image and drape it over the top of my current surface. If we zoom in now, you can see that there is a tremendous difference between the quality of our drone imagery and the imagery that we get for free from Model Builder. I'll zoom back out to see the whole site. Another thing that you may notice is this black boundary around the outside of the image. Let's look at how we can mask this. To do that, I'll come over to the Data Sources panel and I'll find the attached image. I'll right click and choose Configure. In the dialog box, I'll select the Raster tab and then I'll come down to the Color Mask property. I'll click the Ellipsis button. Using this tool, I can choose a specific color and InfraWorks will select all pixels in the image having that color and make them transparent. To make things easy, I'm going to click the Pick Screen Color option, and then I will select a color that I'd like to mask. I will then click OK and close and refresh. InfraWorks will then reprocess the image, masking out those pixels. And when it's finished, I'll have a much more seamless transition between my new image and the existing one. Let's do one more thing. I'd like to see how well this image aligns to the surveyed ground control points that we used in the previous session. If I zoom in here in the northern corner, we can see one of those targets. This happens to be control point 32. That being said, if I pan this down to the roadway, we can see the brightness of the image is such that it makes it difficult to see the control point down here. Let's change the brightness of this image. I can do that by right clicking on the image and I'll choose configure. I will then go back to the raster tab and I'll change the gamma correction value from one to two. The higher the number, the darker the image. I'll choose close and refresh. When the image is finished processing, we'll see the change on screen. Now, this is darker than I'll want the image in most cases. However, this is perfect for seeing our control points. There's control point 30. And if I drag this down to the other end of the roadway, we can just barely make out control point 31. I'm going to zoom out and we'll center the site on screen. And then we'll jump over to Civil 3D. In Civil 3D, I have the drawing open containing the control points that we used when we were working in Recap Photo. Just for a second, let's assume that these control points represented property corners. I'm going to turn on a layer called Boundary, and then we'll do a quick regen. If I zoom in, you can see that this boundary connects my control points. Let's export this boundary geometry, and then we'll import it to InfraWorks and see how well it lines up with those targets on the ground. To export the geometry, I'm going to use the Map Export command. I'm going to save this geometry as a shape file in my shape directory. Let's call it Boundary, and I'll click OK. I'll export the object as a polygon. We'll go to the Options tab, and I'll choose Treat Closed Polylines as Polygons, and I'll click OK. Once the geometry has been exported, we'll flip back over to InfraWorks. Here in InfraWorks, I'll add the boundary by bringing back Windows Explorer. I'll jump into the Shapefile folder, and then I'll drag and drop that boundary shapefile that we just made into the interface. I will then tell InfraWorks what this data represents. I'm going to choose Coverage Areas since it'll be draped over the terrain. I can then select a style. I'll choose this one called Boundary. This is a style that I created. I will then click OK and Close and Refresh. Generally speaking, the style that I've chosen will offset that geometry to the inside about 3 feet and then colorize the offset area in yellow. Let's zoom in. 
And when I do, I can see that corner is hitting right on the money with control point 30. We'll pan this over and I can see point 31 looks good. I'll zoom out and we'll take a look at the northeast corner. This one's lining up very well. And then we'll take a look at the northwest. This one is also perfect. Finally, let's zoom out and we'll center this site on screen. Now that I've cross-checked the image against the ground control points, I no longer need this boundary, so I'll right-click on it and choose Remove, and Yes. Last thing, let's restore the original brightness to this image. I'll do that by right-clicking on the image, and I'll choose Configure. And on the Raster tab, we'll set the Gamma Correction back to its original value of 1, and I'll click Close and Refresh. I can then close the Data Sources panel, and we can orbit and take a look at the model. As you can see, by leveraging the aerial imagery created by Recap Photo, my InfraWorks model now includes a very accurate, high-resolution representation of the existing site. In the next session, we'll improve the accuracy of this model even further by incorporating the point cloud data that was also generated by Recap Photo. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.